In the previous video, I told you that all chemical reactions involve energy being either released or absorbed by the system. And I defined the system as the chemical reaction that we're studying or any object that's under study. In science, we recognize three different types of systems, the open system, the closed system, and the isolated system. And in this video, I'm going to give you a definition of each of these th three types of systems and explain how they're similar and different. An open system is the most common type of system that we work with in chemistry. And this system, as its name implies, is completely open to the surroundings. This means that the system can freely exchange mass with the surroundings, so it doesn't have a lid on it, it is not physically closed. Freely exchanging mass means that we could add more to that system if we wanted, or we could see that some of the system's mass was lost to the surroundings, if that were the case. In addition to that, this system is also free to exchange heat or energy with the surroundings. Um, so this means that we can heat this system up by maybe putting a Bunsen burner underneath it. Um, or if this reaction is exothermic, this reaction can give off heat. And if we were to touch it, it would feel warm. So let's write down a definition of an open system is one that can exchange both mass and energy with the surroundings And again, as I said, this is the most common type of system that we work with in chemistry. Now, the second type of system that we're going to talk about is a closed system. And in the closed system, we literally just close it up. We put a lid on the top of it, or we put a stopper inside this flask. Putting a lid on the top of it means that it is no longer free to exchange mass with the surroundings. So whatever we have inside of this container is not going to come out. So it cannot exchange mass anymore, but it is still free to exchange energy with the surroundings. Um, as we talked about with the open system, this means that we can heat the closed system up by putting a Bunsen burner underneath it or setting it onto a hot plate. Or if this is an exothermic reaction and we touch it, we'll be able to feel the heat or the energy that is being given off by this process. So a closed system, if we define that, can only exchange energy with its surroundings. Now the final type of system that we're gonna talk about is an isolated system. And as you kind of imagine watching the progression of how this goes, an isolated system is one that is completely, as the name implies, isolated from its environment. So that involves putting a lid on this so that nothing, so no mass can get out, so we're closing it up so that no mass can be exchanged. And in addition to that, it involves putting some sort of insulation around this system. So I'm just gonna draw some sort of insulating device here. Uh, maybe we'll shade it a little bit. This is some sort of insulator that prevents the system from exchanging energy with the surroundings. So I'm gonna label this that it is insulated the types of insulation that we would use for this depends on the system itself and what we're actually trying to accomplish. And this isolated system, because it has this lid on it, it cannot exchange mass with the surroundings. And also because of this insulation, if any heat is being given off by this system, it is not going to be allowed to escape into the surroundings or vice versa. If we were to put some sort of Bunsen burner underneath this, the heat from that Bunsen burner would not be able to make its way through the insulation and get into the system. So an isolated system is one that cannot exchange anything with the surroundings. And these are the three different types of systems that we work with in chemistry. The open system, which can exchange both energy and mass, the closed system, which only exchanges energy, and the isolated system, which does not exchange anything at all.